Hi, everybody. Welcome to Custody Matters Live. My name is Danica Joan with my co-host, Bud Vino. Welcome, welcome again. He is, he's filling, he started out to fill in for Wendy Perry, who's been out uh, dealing with medical concerns. But, every, but I tell you, we, we have some pretty good chemistry, so we might end up keeping him around for a while. What do you think, Bud? Well, hey, Danica, I'm game. You know that. Thank you for the flattering and humbling intro. Uh, release date of the show, December 4th, 2019, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And Danica, you're right. This is very easy, very organic, uh, and a lot of fun working with you. Again, I'm filling in temporarily for the great Wendy Perry, who's having her surgery this week. We wish, wish Wendy all the best. She's going to come out better than ever. And it was a great show last week, Danica. An awesome reception, both publicly and privately. And we're going to bring it even heavier this week and even better next week and the week after. And the week after, it's going to keep rolling. So thank you to everybody out there for the great response. We want to keep bringing it. And we have a great show tonight, Danica. Thank you. Yes. And so today, earlier, before the show, we were, Bud and I were talking about what kind of topics that we want to bring into the show uh, over the next few weeks. And the thing is, is a lot of times we bring experts in, but some of, something that I've not seen really um, be brought into interviews is how these professionals who are impacted by high conflict custody situations feel? What, did it, what is it like in their shoes? So that's who we have. We brought on uh, a special guest with us today. But before I introduce her, I really wanted to talk to you about the fact that what we have ahead in 2020, we're creating uh, several conferences and we're going to, gonna, we are planning on targeting different places in the United States. Actually, it doesn't have to necessarily be in the United States. It could be somewhere in North America. But if somehow it calls to you to be a host or be somehow a part of bringing Custody Matters Live and our conferences to your area, please reach out to us because currently we have not, uh, we're not completely set on our dates for 2020. We are also not set on our locations yet. So please reach out to us and, and uh, we can have a conversation. Okay, bud. Danica, if I could, what a great place to be where we're at right now. And, and we spoke, and we've been speaking a lot this week excitedly. I know I want to give a shout out to Mario behind the scenes who helps out. And also, again, Wendy, there's such an energy right now. And everybody's looking forward to the, end, the rest of this month in 2020. The momentum is building. The energy is building. You can feel it, Danica. Again, I'm honored. And it's going to be a fun year. It really is. You know, okay, so our special guest is Dr. Sally Brisbane Stone. Uh, now, Dr. Sally, we call her affectionately, she is, she has a quite a history in as an educator, as an administrator in education. She has been an elementary school principal. She's been a middle school dean. She has been a principal at an adult school, and she's also been part of in the collegiate system um, as a principal. So welcome, Dr. Sally, to our show. Thank you so much. I am excited to be here and looking forward to the conversation and just all of the energy that is clearly emanating from this, this show being live. So thank you so much for being here. Mm, thank you for having us. You know, one of the things that we that uh, I thought you really needed to come to the show and talk talk um, and be here for our viewers is is because you bring the perspective of what it's like to be on the receiving end of parents who are going through conflict and they bring it into the school system where that should be a safe haven for the child to be able to learn. Correct. Absolutely. And it is so important to understand all the dynamics that go into play when you're dealing with volatile or contentious situations. And so we sometimes think of it from the perspective of the child, which is absolutely the first perspective that we should be um, uh, dealing with. But there are also several other lenses that are going into play. And as an administrator and as a classroom teacher, it's sometimes very difficult when all of those wheels start turning and you're trying to figure out what is in the best interest of the child. As a principal, you know, as you have already stated, it has always been a, a goal of mine to ensure that we take into account the needs of the student, 
but we also pay attention to what's going on in the dynamics of the family. And so that also deals with the two parents that are involved as co-parents. It deals with the teacher. It deals with everyone from the cafeteria manager to the bus driver, because all of those are pivot and touch points in dealing with the needs of the child. And so sometimes we tend to think of it just from the perspective of, you know, the child sitting in a chair. But if we understood some of the things that the dilemmas or the challenges that take place from that child getting up in the morning to sitting in that chair with an expectation that they're going to learn, we really would see the huge benefit of the work that you are doing and the work that um, Bud is doing. And so I'm excited to be here just to share and my understanding and offer some an ins insight to how that all plays out. Dr. Sally, we're gonna work together more than just this show. I can feel you have a great energy. And Danica was so excited to bring you on. And, and I was too when she brought you up because this is exactly what we're trying to do in terms of this perspective. I think this is something, as Danica, Danica and I spoke of behind the scenes too, that a lot of people don't get. We want to try and bring all those perspectives together uh, yes. so we can kind of put this all together. That's the only way you can uh, kind of fix certain things or try and, you know, you have to get all those perspectives and vantage points because you've got to know all those directions. And I, and I love your uh, kind of view on it. The way I, I assume when you were talking, you've got to wear a million different hats, doctor, in that position. <laughs> Unbelievable. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and there, there are so many different ways that, that the uh, outcomes could go. And as we look at how to help navigate through the different challenges, the ups and downs, we do absolutely have to take in, into account the two parents. And I, I mean, there's so many different stories that I could share and situations that would, you know, paint a picture that seems very uh, uh, hopeless in a lot of cases. But I think when parents have an understanding, when there are ways for them to be able to participate in, in webinars or training sessions from the staff all the way to the district office, it adds a layer of support and awareness that is unfortunately missing. But as, again, I'm just super excited to see how this can all help um, uh, youth and, and parents alike. I can recall so many parents that I sat across the table from and explained to them, you know, the law. The law talks about abuse and the law talks about, you know, uh, contentious situations and, and what, how co-parents are supposed to behave. But if you're explaining to a parent that you cannot uh, prohibit the co-parent from picking up your child if they are uh, designated as the co-parent and they are allowed to pick them up, it gets really wonky. It gets really scary when they start doing things like, well, I'm going to come and I'm going to be here if he allows this person to come or if he allows this his girlfriend to pick him up. And you have to be able to give them re strategies in order to uh, calm the situation down and make sure that the child who's sitting there wondering what in the world is gonna happen when my dad or my mom shows up. And so there have been times where I've had to call law enforcement to come into play and to be a part of making sure that we can deliver a child safely to their home environment. And unfortunately, that's not always the case. I just, I can't, that is such a terrible place for you to be because you don't know. Um, it, and I know that education is, is a profession of the heart. You know, your heart is really, you're wanting to do the right thing you, for the child. And a lot of times one parent is just a little bit nicer than the other. Some of them, some come in just ranting and raving and it's easy to not like them, but Absolutely. you have no idea what has happened that had them in such a, like a demand for justice on their end. Absolutely. If we think about the amount of time that we spend in the educational environment. Students get up, you know, five, six o'clock in the morning, they get on a bus, they get to school or their parents drop them off. They're there the whole day. And, you know, I can never, never forget one little student, I'll, I'll just because his, I don't wanna share his name, although this was many years ago, his name was Tom. There's one little student there that he 
did not know what was going to happen when he got home. And so he had a horrific day. He had a terrible day. He wasn't sure that, you know, when he got home, if there was going to be DCF there to pick him up. And I remember talking to the um, social worker on the phone and they were just flabbergasted. They didn't know what to do. They didn't know what to expect. And so, as you said, Danica, education is of the heart. And I can clearly remember sitting there at my desk thinking, did that child get home safely? you know, what happened to them. And fortunately, the next day, they did not show up. Two days later, they did. But I don't have the right to call up and say, hey, did your child get home? So it's a very, very um, unregulated, I would say. Um, the laws as they pertain to child abuse, as they pertain to custody and, and co-parenting are very clear. But sometimes there are fine lines that as an administrator, I'm not home with that child. I don't have a, a, um, a, a grasp on which parent is in the right or which parent is in the wrong or what happened two weeks ago to cause parent A to be so contentious. And so it would really be a, a benefit to all concerned if there were opportunities for there to be training in the schools to address some of these issues. Bingo. Definitely. I, that's, I, I'm glad that you brought it up because it's something that I know Wendy is working on, just doing professional development with the staff and giving them tools and not only recognizing the symptoms of parental alienation, but just in all situations, all co-parenting situations, there can be something, a very objective balanced view of this is how this is our strategy this is there has to be a protocol of treating children when a child has uh parents that are split up they have two homes not one that's that right that it's the, i mean in my view it would be the responsibility of the the instructor to make sure that both parents are treated fairly when a text is sent out if that's their method their form of communication that there's no reason why there can't be a group text. There can be also a group email. There can be right. anything that doesn't put the child in the middle. So the child, it's the, a lot of times back in the day, you sent the child home with this, the note and the note went to the parent. But in this day and age, you can't just assume that the note's gonna go to all parents. That's right. And more often than not, because the parents are in a conflicting scenario that is used as a pawn or used as collateral for one parent to gain the power over or bully another parent or threaten or harass another parent. And so, you know, there really isn't a connection between the, the school, the home, and even the community as it pertains to custody and who has what right and what supplants the other or what makes one one person um, more uh, uh, have more availability to making sure things are going the way that they should go. And so I'm not sure what the correct word is, but you touched on it when you talked about um, parental alienation and those factors and issues that come into play. And so it makes a big difference when everybody is aware and that there are some some core pieces of information whether it's training information whether it's a conference or a workshop whether it's training provided by a by this format i i do believe that that we have moved away from a place where we we can no longer sit in the seat of unawareness um, as administrators now as as an administrator if i suspect abuse and I don't report it, I can lose my license. And so we're familiar with that as educators. And so I think it's gonna be going more towards what happens in contentious custody situation. You know, what is going to be the, the rule of thumb? So, but I wanted to share with you that uh, now what Sally's doing, she has, she's now has her own school and it's called Florida Court Ordered. And uh, one of the things that she offers not only does um, do her programs offer domestic violence and anger management education for offenders, but she also 
teaches and provides the co-parenting course that um, the family stabilization course that I think every state in the United States has to take this at, like the minimum four hour course for parents who are going through divorce. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. And, and even course. that, you know, um, you know, just to jump in, it really, it really has been such a rewarding and enriching experience for me um, to be able to teach the co-parenting course, because now it's given me one more perspective. If you think about it from through the eyes of the child, we do provide, you know, accommodations when children have difficulty with learning. We provide accommodations and modifications when children have needs specific um, um, uh, uh, foods or, or have particular allergies. If there is a dysfunctional problem within the family, there should be accommodations that are made for the child in the classroom and every aspect that impacts them. Because I can tell you there are a number of students who are sitting, sitting in classrooms who are totally non-compliant, not engaged, and not focused because they are worried about which parent is going to show up is there going to be a you know conflict between you know the two parents and just simply not wanting to be in the middle if they could voice their 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 thoughts i guarantee you more than more often than not they would be saying i just wish i could stay at school because I have no control over my family, you know, dynamics. I don't know whether I'm going here today, there tomorrow. If one parent is going to be using the situation to further their own personal agenda and just having taught this class has enlightened me so much in the need for um, yeah, the, 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 the research that you've done through uh, A Happy Child and, and, and Kids Need Both and your work with um, parent um, parental alienation and, and mediation and all those issues. And, and it has inspired and motivated me to want to do more. Well, I'm, this actually, this is so great having you here because to be able to, like, I, there's things I know and, I'm, and I assert are happening and, and what it is, what it's like to be on your end of the, of um, your, your end. However, you've just validated a lot of how important it is to be there to provide continuing education for yes absolutely and so so that they we can be their helping hand a lot yeah. of times advocates say we have been so hurt by the system by well-meaning teachers well-meaning meaning um secretaries in the school office yes yes we've actually been hurt by them because they really don't know. So it's they don't. important to, to provide them the support so that they can confidently make the right decision in the midst of, of all of the turmoil that's happening. Absolutely, absolutely. And many cases you don't get a do-over. You know, once the pendulum has swung, you know, and things are put into motion, it is very hard to try to go and pull it back and, you know, and so, providing that being proactive and providing that awareness and education and professional development up front, um, it is it is essential. And it's across social economic boundaries, it's across cross gender, it's across ethnicity, it's across any and everything when it boils down to the the very uh, essential sa health, safety and welfare of children. It extends from the home into the class. Yeah, doctor, if, if I was thinking as you were speaking too, it's so important what you're doing and thank you for doing it. I, I think what the courts do too is they set up an adversarial uh, kind of one-upsmanship oh. sort of situation to where that's how people kind of conduct themselves outside of court. They kind of learn from that. And a lot of us out there who have children do not know how to conduct themselves in, term of, in terms of interpersonal relationships ourselves. We don't know how to uh, have uh, disagreements and, and just say, okay, I respect that and walk away. We always have to quote unquote win. And even when there's a separation, we're a society that believes there's gotta be someone that was wrong. There's gotta be right. someone that was psycho. That, instead of just saying, hey, it didn't work out and we can both still respect each other. No one has to quote unquote win because when you do that, the child's actually the one who loses because you have situations like what you said about. Absolutely. 
how the child is worried all day. And that anxiety will bleed over into every aspect of their life. Yes. So I think what you're doing is so paramount, so important, because even just teaching parents, hey, how can we all win in this situation? It doesn't have to be all, win, 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 all or nothing. And I'm going to show my worth by, by uh, smearing the other person. Um, yeah. That's not to live a happy life. And that's not how you uh, conduct yourself as a parent. That so, is again, such I, a good I, point. Thank you. I applaud you for, for doing that and teaching those uh, kind of core things. And I think all the classes that you're teaching are all intermingled. They're all very necessary and they all bleed over into each other. So I applaud you. Awesome. For certain, uh, you know, and, and sometimes it is the very min the very small things, but they begin and then they add up. For example, in, in Florida uh, school system, if the parent gets the orientation packet home, they fill out who's on the emergency card. One parent, even though you have two co-parents and they're sharing custody maybe on a seven day rotation, one, the parent that is the, it gets the, that fills out the application or the, or the orientation packet can say child cannot be picked up and listed. Mm -hmm. So now you have already created a scenario when the parent B shows up, the office is going, but it says that you can't pick up this child if their name is not there. Or even more, I've seen a note there, call me if his girlfriend comes to pick up my child. So you can see the, just the level of, of total uh, Immaturity. craziness that can uh, be yeah, in just something as simple as that. And right. so know, those little things. Yeah, and we know some of the situations are valid with his legitimate concerns. But I for think sure. For the, the, the higher percentage, I think it's... Um, uh, kind of, again, that one-upsmanship and kind of that back-and-forth drama. Uh, well, which, because which, there's no regulation there. You can't tell the parent, you know, I mean, you can't, you, you can't tell a parent if, you're, if the father's name is on the birth certificate. The father has every right to get all the information concerning their child. But then the parent turns around and says, well, I'm going to do this if they, and so it just becomes a snowball. It becomes a continuous cycle of who can just, have the right. upper hand and, and it and, and, really and, and, does impact the child negatively to where they're misbehaving their academics suffer their their, their whole social emotional uh yep. persona is impacted negatively absolutely and doctor as you know kids they emulate what they see yes so again when they're seeing that, yeah when they're seeing that conflict and again as you mentioned i'm glad you did they're not retaining anything in school when they're constantly worried about when they're getting out. I mean, that's, I mean, it's a lose lose for everybody and the kids in a big way. That's uh, it. So again, this is really important. Again, you're doing some great work, necessary work. Well, and I appreciate, you know, the support and the opportunity to collaborate and partner and be a part of the amazing work that, that you're doing. And it is, it is my goal as I, you know, even look at, it really boils down to, you know, uh, the holistic efforts of, of addressing all the needs of the child. You can address academics all day, but if their family life is in an uproar, they're not going to learn. And, and, and that's a fact. We, the research supports it, the, you know, children that have graduated and moved on, you know, and it's always that, that um, caring person that said, you know, I know things are tough, but this is what I can do to help. And I believe that we need to have more of that. We need to have more collaborations between the, the home and the community and um, the faith-based networks and everybody who touches that child mm -hmm. needs to be made aware of the opportunities to be able to work together. Well, you know, Dr. Sally, I really appreciate you coming on our show and sharing from the, the, an administrator's perspective of what it's like to be able to, to, to have to navigate contentious custody situations in, in the school when you're just there to make sure that the child has, um, grows up with all the tools that they need, Absolutely. emotionally, educationally, and everything. I do wanna ask you one more question. What would you suggest, what, would you, what advice would you give to parents when they're coming in, they're having to deal with the school system, and maybe they've already, um, you know, been thrown under the bus by their ex, and it's been, they've been, it's been enrolled, the whole story has um, been bought into by administration. 
what would you, what advice would you give to that parent? That is such a good question and, and such a, a one that needs to be, I, I think that, that the process of moving from um, contentious relationships to uh, a more uh, powerful place of, of restoration or collaboration or partnership can be achieved, but it has to start with all parties being open and willing. And I think the reason why people walk away from the co-parenting classes with, with, with more information than they started with is because they're court ordered. And so I believe that there should be an effort to require uh, uh, students who are going through, uh, parent, have parents that are going through divorce, that there needs to be some type of counseling component with their guidance counselor, with the social worker, with an advocate, a guardian, ad litem, someone. Because it clearly, when students have um, academic support, they get need academic support, they get tutors when athletes need more training they have after school so there the 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 understanding that there has to be an addition to what's already been in an area that is going to be supportive and conducive i think is is apparent whether whether they're able to check out a a a workshop or a seminar and do it online um i know that in florida legislature legislature the legislators are going to be hearing um i think it's already passed it was passed under our governor uh, mr uh, May, um, governor DeSantis. his wife has promoted a a initiative to require every student to go through a mental health class and it has predicated upon a lot of the things that's happened the shootings in schools and things of that nature and their realization that we need to start addressing the social emotional um, behaviors and aspects of children and so while it may not be a shooting some of the devastation that occurs when parents are going through parental alienation it's like the cycles of grief it's like all of those those uh, uh, conflicting things. So it may not be someone got shot, but it's like a death. Yes, and so there doctor, needs to be something. I, I, I know we're probably running short on time. I'm so glad you brought that out, those cycles of trauma and grief. They're, they're identical in many ways. Absolutely. Uh, so thank you so much for, for validating that and bringing it up. I can see why you love her, Dan. <laughs> what, a, what a wonderful interview. And as you were, you were speaking, I know we're going to be going out soon. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Oh, I, was thinking, I was thinking as you were speaking in the words of the late, great Maya Angelou, you did then what you knew how to do when you knew better. You did better. You're teaching uh, everybody. Yeah, you got it. Thank you. thank you so much. You're amazing. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, bud. It is time to call it a day on this wow. episode of Custody Matters Live, so take it away. Already, Danica, thank you so much again. December 4th, 2019, we're going out at about 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Again, filling in temporarily for the great Wendy Perry, who we wish good luck again in her surgery this week. We love you, Wendy. Thank you to Mario behind the scenes. I'm gonna give out, I've got about 40 shout outs next week. We don't have them uh, time today, but I'm gonna do that at some point. So everybody out there, I will get to you. Love you, thanks everybody out there. Danica. As always, we're getting better and better and better like a fine wine. Thank you to Dr. Sally. Sally. <laughs> I got it right. We love you. We're going to work with you again soon. Thank you so much, awesome. everybody out there. It's Take care, over. everybody. It's over. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>